Hello, my name is Steve Knudsen. I work for Infor. And today we're going to talk about a piece of the Infor Cloud Suite distribution. You can see Cloud Suite for distribution has many different pieces to it, so I wanted to start here. But I've highlighted Infor CRM because that's what we're really going to focus on for today. We're going to talk about the day in the life of a sales rep using the Infor CRM with different types of devices, mobility, tablets, uh, web access, and also access via Outlook. Now, as far as industry trends goes, CRM is a huge one because CRM really gives a distributor the ability to stay really close to their customers as far as all the activities that are happening um, in a real-time basis. So, for example, if I'm a rep and I'm on my phone looking at my activities and my accounts and what's going on, if the inside CSR just took a phone call or updated an opportunity, I want to know about that in real time on my iPad, my phone, or maybe I'm in the full web client, maybe I'm doing email and Outlook and I want to keep my thumb on everything that's happening inside uh, my accounts. So today we're going to talk about Progressive Industries. They are a distributor of lawn equipment, irrigation, parts and service and so on. But you can see here on the left, you've got many different types of users or profiles that are going to be using the CRM throughout the day. You've got your inside salespeople, you've got your outside sales reps, you've got management that wants to watch all of this and what's going on with all the accounts. And then you've also got the C-level person where they're going to want to see dashboards and drill down and keep their thumb on the entire company. I'm going to focus on Kirk Taylor today and we're going to do a day in the life of Kirk using the CRM from sunup to sundown and different devices keeping his thumb on his accounts. He knows exactly what he needs to do. What do I need to do today? What's my to-do list? Who are my accounts? Who are my contacts? And so on. And with that, we're going to start. So Kirk's alarm goes off in the morning on his phone. It wakes him up and he turns off his alarm and the first thing he looks at is what do I need to do today? What does my day look like? And I can see here that I've got some phone calls. I'm looking at all my activities. I've got some phone calls. Here's one with uh, Andrew Smith to discuss some opportunities. I could click and drill and see more detail on that if I want. I've also got some AR collection calls later this afternoon. And I've also got um, a to-do for organizing my new accounts that were assigned to me yesterday by my sales manager. If I scroll down, I can see I've got this Toro contract meeting. And this is, this is an opportunity. I mean, this is on my calendar, and I know this meeting's coming up, but I need to make sure I keep my thumb on this and make sure it's going to happen. Now, again, I'm just waking up, but I want to quickly look at this. I can see the contacts on this meeting invite. Who's going to be in the meeting? Where is the meeting going to be? What is the opportunity that's tied to it and the account and so on? But I'm going to drill directly into this meeting invite, and it gives me details about exactly what we're going to do. We're going to talk about this 2016 contract. Um, it's, uh, it's for some sprayers, some green rollers, and so on. So now I know what we're talking about in this meeting, and I could have attachments and so on. It looks like it's at 12.30 p.m. today. It's for an hour, and I'm meeting with uh, Steve Johnson, Chicago Park District, and here is the opportunity. And again, these are hot links. I can drill down to these if I need to. Now, in this case, I'm going to call Steve, and I'm going to make sure that he is on track for this meeting. I'm just going to leave him a voicemail or just touch base with him. And to do that, I'm just going to add a new call. So I just picked up the phone. I called Steve, and I could use my voice over on my phone, too, to record this activity. I could use my voice to say, okay, I called Steve. We talked about it. We're confirmed. And it logs that automatically in this phone call activity. So this is going to be regarding what? Uh, it's going to be follow up on a proposal. So I'm just going to give this a regarding so I kind of know what this phone call is about or what it was about. Confirmed meeting. We're good to go. And it was a phone call, so I can, I can record this as needed. And the priority on this was high. Now, again, I've already called them, and, and I could use my voiceover to, to record my notes and all that kind of stuff. But in this case, um, we're not going to repeat this. Here's the start time. We're actually going to call them right now and just close this. But here's the detail on this phone call. And if I want, I can come down here. I see Steve. I pick up the phone, call him. I could assign the opportunity as needed. But now we are basically done, and I'm going to continue. So I just did that call, and I basically closed that phone call, and I move on with the rest of my day. Now, again, I'm still just getting out of bed. You know, I just got out of the shower now, and I want to take a quick look at, for example, all my accounts on my iPhone. I can click here and say, you know what, i got to check out Chicago Park District. I can do a search on that guy, and there it is. So Chicago Park District, if I click and drill on this guy, this is my 360-degree view of this account. 
I can add a note, I could schedule an activity on this account, or I can look at more detail. So related items, we have 12 open activities for this account. We've got eight main contacts, we've got a bunch of opportunities, and from there I can click, drill, get the information I need, and then move on with my day. Okay, so now Kirk goes down, Kirk goes downstairs to, to have breakfast before he goes to the office. And now what he does is he switches to his iPad. And his iPad is going to have a very similar look and feel, actually the same look and feel on his phone, but it does auto size to any device you're using. So this is the mobile CRM. And in this case, I'm going to take a look at my activities for today. Here's that same list that we saw earlier. And from here, I want to review this to-do to list because I might want to drill into some of these and work these as I'm having breakfast. Fine, you can certainly do that. Now, in this case, there was a, there's a phone call. I'm going to say, here's a, let's see. Here's a collection call that I want to address right now. I'm just going to pick up the phone. I'm going to call Joan Smith. And this collection call, when I go into it now, I can update it. What did we talk about? And I can also complete the call. So I've talked to Joan. I entered some notes on this call. I just want to complete it. We're good to go. And I save. And we move on from there. And I go to my next activity. Okay. Now, I also see I've got some AR collection calls in four hours. Now, when I, when I look at this call, I can see it's going to be it's, it's a two-hour time frame. And you know what? This bumps into something else on my calendar. So what I want to do is I want to reassign this to somebody else. So I'm going to go into the detail on my call, and you can see it's assigned to me right now as administrator, but I'm going to reassign it to somebody else. And here's a list internally at, Pro at Progressive Industries where I can choose somebody else to actually pick this up on their list to do. And I'm going to give this to Diane Dunbar, and I'm going to go ahead and save. And now that falls off my list, and it's been assigned to Diane. And I go back to my main list. Again, I'm finishing my breakfast. I'm not, I haven't left yet. I want to keep a thumb on my day. The next thing I might want to do is say, well, show me my calendar. I want to see exactly what's going on this week, next week, today, and so on. Here's today. And again, here's the stuff I need to do. It's that same list. But if I also want to look at the entire week, I can certainly do that. And when I look at the week, I can see tomorrow I've got something at 2.30 today. Here's that list again. And I had something back on Monday that's still open and so on. But I can also take a quick snapshot of my month. And when I look at the month, what's nice about this is I can see, okay, well, today's the 28th, and I do have those five activities. Boom, here they are. Tomorrow I've got one. I can go month to month and see all my open activities, so I know how heavy my days are going to be um, as far as work coming up. And again, if I want to click and drill and close these and work these right now, I can certainly do that. Okay, now, Kirk jumps in the car. He goes to the office. He gets in the office. He sits down. And it opens up his laptop, and now he's going to see his full CRM web client. And the first thing you see is in his CRM. Now, this is where he's got internet access, and he just goes to the full blown CRM. He's going to see exactly the same detail that I just showed you in the mobile devices, but it's in a, it's in a different format. It's a little more of a full, full CRM look at everything. Now, the first thing I do is, is I start with my dashboard. And this dashboard, I can see the things that I want to see in real time. So here's all my open opportunities, my sum of sales potential. And these, these are all configured by the user. They can be built by the user, or you can build out these dashboards and assign them to your sales reps, your inside people, and so on. And if I'm a sales manager, again, it's going to look very different. I'm going to be looking at all the reps, all their opportunities, and have all sorts of dashboards and so on. Now, here I've got a full list of my pipeline. If I want to see that in a chart or graph, I can certainly do that. Here's my top opportunities. These are the ones I want to really look at. This guy right here, Chicago Park District, is estimated to close on 5-6, May, May 6th, 75,000. And we're pretty close to probability to, uh, to closing this guy. And it's, um, and it's something I want to watch throughout the day. Now, if I want to change these dashboards, it's real simple. If I just click on this guy right here and I say, you know what? I want to change my goal to from 70 million to 80 million. All of our quotas go up, so I'm going to bump it up. And now it redoes my chart, my graph, and I can move on from there. Now, from here, if I do want to see this, uh, the detail on this opportunity, I want to work this thing. I want to see what's going on here. 
and what the detail is behind it. So when I go into the opportunity, this is all my activities, all my phone calls, all my meetings, and kind of a history, kind of a storybook of this opportunity. And you might look at it as a 360 degree view of this opportunity for this account. Now from here, I can take a look at some different activities that I have on this guy. Uh, I've got attachments, I got marketing, I got notes, I got history and so on, so I can keep my thumb on exactly what's going on with this account or this opportunity. Now, let's go to accounts. When I click on accounts here in the, in the left pane, it puts me into all my accounts that I own as far as what data we want to see. Do you want to drag this stuff around? Do I want to maybe turn off a column or turn on a new column? Do I want to sort this? Do I want to do a lookup to find one of my accounts? You'll notice on the right, I've also got this nice filter. So what I do is I come in and I want to see all my accounts that begin with C. I'm looking for Chicago Park District. Now again, I could just do a search and we'll do that in a moment. But now it's filtering down on all my accounts that start with C. And you can see this over here in the left pane. But I'm also going to do a secondary sort. I want to see all my accounts that start with C that are in Denver. So I'm going to look at city and from there I can see I've got Denver right here. Boom. I don't have to refresh or anything. It automatically refreshes for me and it looks like I've got just one account in, uh, in Denver. Uh, that starts with C. Now I'm going to take this off the filter up here and I'm going to say just show me all my accounts in Denver. So I'm just going to shut this off and get a bigger list. Because Denver is where I live, Denver is where I work, these are the accounts in Denver that I'm always going to and keeping in contact because I'm a Denver sales rep. So what I'm doing here is I just filter down very quickly to exactly what I want to find. I could also do a search for this customer and when I do, I've got some, some very flexible options for doing a keyword search. Do I want to find them by account name, account type, owner, status, and so on. And you've also got this nice search here that says, okay, this is part of the search, is that it contains, equals to, less than, greater than, starts with, and so on. And this is kind of a Boolean search, so I can add different levels here and have them all search at the same time to find discreetly exactly what I need. Okay, now, again, these are my accounts. I could click, I could drill. Well, what I'm going to do here is, since I always work these accounts every day, I'm going to basically promote this group of all my accounts in Denver to my dashboard so I don't have to come here looking for them each day. So I'm going to go ahead and send this to my sales dashboard and that's now been promoted to my sales dashboard. So let's go take a look at that. So I'm going to go back up to my dashboard page. So when I start my day that list of accounts can be right here. I don't have to go looking for it. And boom, they're right there. Here's all my accounts. And as I work these accounts from my dashboard, if I want to see the full list, I can just click View Group. And now here I'm back on that exact same page showing me that list of those accounts. Now we're going to take a look at Chicago Park District. And I'm just going to go ahead and do a search to show you how that works. Starts with, I'm just going to do Chicago. Boom, it finds my account. And I move on from there. Okay. So I've got Chicago Park District. The one I want to look at here um, is going to be this guy here. Okay, so I click, I drill. Now I've got a 360 degree view of this account. I might want to pick up the phone, call my main contact, talk a little bit about the open opportunities. This shows me the full health of this company, what's going on, and so on. You can see my contacts with these guys, John Smith. Here's my activities with this account, and right down the line. So I've got some completed activities. I've also got some open opportunities for these guys and I can look at those as well. Now I want to point out over here, if I were to click on invoices, these are all the invoices from the ERP for this account. So in real time, information is getting pushed from the ERP for this account, such as sales orders, quotes, invoices, accounts receivable, contacts, customers, and ship tos. So a lot of data there is flowing in automatically in near real time. It's about a five second delay. So as things happen in the ERP, I've got a full list of these billings, my receivables, and so on. Okay, now what I'd like to do is we're gonna talk a little bit about the ERP integration. And I'm gonna go back to the ERP. And I'm gonna do a lookup for the same account. We're gonna change a contact. 
So I'm in the ERP. This is SX Enterprise, and I'm going to do a lookup for Chicago. Chicago Park District. And it comes back and it shows me my accounts. And this is the one I want right here. Boom, customer. I'm going to view out, view these guys. And when I get into this account, now I'm looking at their, their accounts receivable uh, inquiry. But what I want to do here is look at the, the different uh, contacts I have in this account. And now in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a change to, let's say, uh, Louise Hansen. Wheezy. And from here, I'm going to go ahead and do an update on her account. And she's not a senior buyer, she's just a buyer. So I'm just going to make that small change to this account. Click Save, and now we're done. And that's going to get pushed over to the CRM in a matter of a few seconds. Now, from there, I'd like to talk a little bit more about these other pieces of the CRM client. So this is the full web client. You can see, again, I can go straight to sales orders, invoices, receivables. This is all coming in real time from the ERP. But I've also got a marketing module where I can do all my campaigns, I can track my leads, I can do campaigns and e-blasts and send things out to customers and so on, as well as service and support. Now these are for like service tickets or trouble tickets that come in from a customer. So if I call up, if you get a phone call from one of your customers and some of the lawn equipment wasn't set up and configured correctly, that's going to be like a case, a service ticket that might have multiple activities to get to resolution. And you can track all that. So if they ever call back, we've got that history and we know what we did last week on that equipment and so on. Now, we've also got full reporting inside the CRM. And the reporting tool is, is by module. So if I were to take a look at, let's say, sales, and I were to go down to reports. Again, I'm that sales rep, I'm Kirk, I want to run a quick report, and I might have a bank of reports that I'm used to. I want to see a sales report, I want to see a, a, a printout sales report with a dashboard embedded and so on. Now in this case, I'm, I'm Kirk, and I'm looking at all my opportunity reports. I could pick these guys up and I could run them one by one, but in this case, I've got some already waiting for me that I've already set up. And here's the first report, and these are really simple to run. And a lot of these are all pre-configured in their canned reports, and you can also create your own. But in this case, here's a sales process stage analysis. And me, Kirk, I want to know what's going on here with these sales processes. I want to look at the different stages. I want to analyze average number of days that we've had uh, opportunities in these stages and so on. Now, a sales manager, let's say I do have some salespeople below me. Again, I'm Kirk, and I've got three guys, three guys and gals that work for me, or maybe it's 10 or 12. But now I'm looking at forecasts for all my account managers. I want to take a quick sneak peek into what are they doing as far as their potential sales, their weighted average sales, and then some detail below that. So here's Dan Barrett, and here's the detail of his opportunities. Here's the totals, probability to close, and so on. If I want to take a look at Kathy Hughes, Derek Murray, I can just toggle between this, and we're good to go. Now, I've also got an open opportunities report. Uh, you know, myself, Kirk, I want to see this report every day. Now, this could be in a dashboard. And it could be a dashboard type printout here too. This is just a PDF document, but it does show me some, some really discrete detail on one page of all of my different opportunities. Okay, so now again, I'm Kirk. I've looked at my mobile device. I've looked at my iPad. I've used my web client, which is what we're looking at now. Now I turn my attention to Outlook. And my Outlook, you know, this is where I'm gonna do all my email. That's not gonna change. And I can run through my mail uh, one by one, you know, do my emails, responses, and so on. But I want to point out that over here in the right pane, we've got this XBAR plugin. This is CRM. This is exactly the same data I've been showing you. And I've got my accounts. I've got my contacts. I can do activities and so on. If I want to do a new uh, meeting on the fly, I can certainly set that up. If I just talk to a customer, I want to record that. From Outlook, I can certainly do that, record it and close it, enter a new note, a new to-do list, a new lead, contact, and so on. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at my account again. So we're going to search that same account. We're going to take a look at Chicago Park District again. Okay. Now, from there, I find Chicago Park District, and when I take a look at this, I can drill into this account and look at exactly what's going on with these guys. So again, uh, here's my prospect. 
And when I click on this guy here, now it opens up this account and shows me all the detail related to Chicago Park District. So again, this is the full account, 360 degree view. I can see the main information and hey, we've got some activities. I got a scheduled phone call with these guys regarding collection issues. We have a meeting uh, regarding, uh, here's another collection call. I've got some opportunities that I might wanna look at. I might have some trouble tickets. And again, here's my main contacts. So from here, what I'd like to do is just go back to my main look and feel here and talk a little bit more about the integration with email. Because as I look at these different emails, notice that the contacts are changing over here. It pulls the email addresses out of this email and it looks for a match of a contact in CRM. So I can see, yeah, these people are all set up in the CRM. We got Steve, we got Sally, and we have, of course, the administrator. So you can see that this was an email from the admin to these two contacts, and here's the email. So I can drill into this and I can respond to it and do all that great stuff. I won't do that for now, but in this case, what I want to do is I'm going to take a look at this email here. So there's a there's a PL problem on this on this. This is kind of an alert. But I can see that this came from a customer. Okay, so the customer sent me this email. And what I see here is it came from James Knudsen. And this is his signature on his email. And let's say he's not set up as a contact. What I can do is take this and I can just drag it over into my CRM. And boom, it says, do you want to create a new contact for that signature or a new lead? I'm going to say contact. In a opens up a contact box and it automatically populates everything that's relevant from that email address. So his first name, his last name, I can see it captured the email address, it pulled in some phone numbers, and from there I can save and I've got a brand new contact inside my uh, CRM. So I'm going to move on from there. I also want to point out that here's my to-do list again for today. Here's that Toro equipment contract call. It's a couple hours from now that we talked about. So again, we're seeing the same information in all these different ways to access that CRM. And with that, that concludes my discussion. Um, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Goodbye.